So is your hair health connected to your heart health? Could hair loss be connected with heart disease and even insulin resistance? Well, in this video, we're going to explore that connection. At the end of this video, I'll give you some rock solid info on the best lifestyle changes you can make to improve your hair growth in the long term. Don't miss this video, let's get started. So when we talk about cardiovascular disease, we're referring to all the diseases of the heart and the blood vessels. The most common type is coronary heart disease, which is when the heart arteries can't deliver enough blood to the heart. This typically happens when plaque builds up on the inside of the arteries, restricting the flow of blood. And it can lead to all sorts of complications, including heart attack and heart failure. An estimated 18 million Americans suffer from coronary heart disease. Now, the observation that hair loss is linked to cardiovascular disease goes back to at least the 1970s. In the decades since, we have had a full steady accumulation of evidence to the point where it's now really difficult to dismiss this relationship. This is something that is now also starting to filter out into the mainstream media. The evidence suggests that men with androgenetic alopecia are more likely to suffer from heart disease, including coronary heart disease, as well as insulin resistance and metabolic syndrome. Now, there are simply too many studies to summarize here, so we're just gonna look at a few of the larger ones to give you a general sense. We're then gonna go on and discuss the possible reasons for this relation, as well as what this all means for you. First, hair loss and heart disease. One of the best early studies came out of Sweden in the 1980s. The study started in 1954 when invitations to participate in a heart study were sent out. 464 men accepted the invitation and they were followed up over the next 22 years. The researchers were then able to correlate the incidence of coronary heart disease with various other factors. They found well-known risk factors like family history of heart disease, smoking, and stress. They also noted that those who were bald in 1954 were much more likely to suffer from coronary heart disease over the following decades, 25.5% compared to 19.7% for those with hair. A much larger study was conducted via a mail-in questionnaire in the US a few years later. The questionnaire was completed by a whopping 19,000 physicians. The physicians indicated their degree of hair loss when they were 45 years old. They were offered five possible choices from no baldness to severe baldness. And you can see the actual sketch they were given here. Their answers were then compared with their health records, especially as they related to any subsequent heart disease. The results were fascinating. Compared to those with a full head of hair, physicians with frontal baldness had a 9% higher risk of coronary heart disease. For those who also had mild, moderate, and severe vertex hair loss, the risk increased by 23, 32, and 36% respectively. So you had a very clear, steadily increasing relationship between more severe hair loss being linked to an ever increasing risk of heart disease. On the other hand, other studies found no link whatsoever. For example, a study out of Denmark published in 1998 later followed 6,089 men over 16 years. Baldness and these men had been carefully assessed at the start of the study between 1976 and 1978. Over the following 16 years, there were no difference in mortality between men who were bald and those who were not. This was true regardless of the extent of the baldness and regardless if it was frontal or crown area. Why some studies fail to find a positive association is not clear, especially when you consider that many of them have massive numbers of participants. To settle the matter, a team of researchers out of Japan recently published a meta-analysis of all relevant studies. In other words, they pulled the various studies together and ran statistics to get an overall result. It was a study of studies, so to speak, combining data from nine separate large studies. Altogether, these nine studies had recruited almost 45,000 participants. The meta-analysis found a clear linear relation between hair loss and heart disease. Those with severe hair loss at the vertex had a 60% increased risk of heart disease. This declined to 41 and 18% for those who are moderate and mild vertex hair loss. Those with frontal baldness only had a 10% increased risk. The results also showed that men who developed hair loss at a younger age, under 55, were generally at a higher risk. So to summarize, the more severe the hair loss and the earlier it appears, the higher the risk of heart disease. Moving on to hair loss and metabolic syndrome. At its core, metabolic syndrome refers to a dysfunction in the metabolism of the carbohydrates and fats in the body. In very simple words, the way our body stores and utilizes energy becomes messed up. 
This dysfunction typically involves insulin resistance where the body's cells do not respond properly to insulin. This is our hormone that's responsible for regulating blood sugar levels. You see, when we consume foods rich in carbs, especially processed carbs, our blood sugars spike. To bring the levels of blood sugar down to normal levels, our pancreas then secretes insulin. But over time, a systematically unhealthy diet can lead to the cells in our body becoming resistant to the effects of insulin so-called insulin resistance. When this happens, blood sugar levels remain permanently elevated and a host of other health problems can follow. People with metabolic syndrome and insulin resistant are typically overweight or obese with high blood pressure, excess abdominal fat, and high blood sugar. Metabolic syndrome increases the risk of heart disease, type two diabetes, and premature death. In the US, it's believed to affect a whopping 33% of the population. It's largely a lifestyle condition brought on by poor diet and a sedentary lifestyle without exercise. A recent meta-analysis looked at 19 relevant studies that recruited a total of two and a half thousand participants. Overall, men with androgenetic alopecia were around three times more likely to also suffer from metabolic syndrome compared to those with a full head of hair. For women with female pattern hair loss, this increased sevenfold. As with heart disease, those with earlier onset of hair loss were at more risk. The meta-analysis also looked at alopecia areata and found no link whatsoever with heart disease. So what can we make of this relationship? Why does pattern hair loss tend to correlate with poor heart health? Logically, there are three possibilities. Firstly, hair loss causes heart problems, but this doesn't really make sense. Secondly, heart problems lead to hair loss. For example, we can imagine problems with circulation leading to poor blood flow in the scalp, contributing to follicle miniaturization and so on. This is a more plausible possibility and in extreme cases, it might even be the case. But this probably only happens in the most rare of instances. We can be pretty sure of this from one simple fact, that hair loss almost always precedes heart disease, which leads us to the third logical possibility, which is also almost certainly the correct one, that hair loss is an early mark of underlying dysfunction that is also linked to heart disease. In other words, androgenetic alopecia can sometimes serve as an early warning signal that there's a problem in the body. And if it isn't corrected in time, the same underlying process that contributes to hair loss might also lead to cardiovascular disease. One possibility might be elevated androgen levels and increased sensitivity to androgens. The role of androgens in AGA is well established, but the evidence linking it to heart disease is weak. So this doesn't look like a very promising explanation. Far more likely, at least in my opinion, is that pattern hair loss sometimes be a sign of an unhealthy lifestyle, which then manifests itself down the line as more serious heart problems. Remember we saw earlier that AGA is also linked to all aspects of metabolic syndrome. These include being overweight, hypertension, and insulin resistance. It's possible that over time, insulin resistance leads to damage in microscopic vasculature, and this damage is first reflected in the hair follicles. With the blood vessels supplying the hair follicles compromised, the follicles end up in a state of prolonged oxygen insufficiency, so-called hypoxia, and eventually they start to miniaturize. Over the years, the damage to the blood vessels also leads to visible heart and circulatory problems. All this is just a hypothesis at this moment. But remember, we're now sitting on a massive body of evidence that has accumulated over the decades. This needs to be accounted for, and this explanation seems the most plausible one for now. Now, if you're watching this video because you're concerned about your hair loss, the first thing I want to emphasize is there's no need to panic. Remember, the studies only suggest a mild correlation between hair loss and heart disease. You can be completely bored and have the heart of an athlete. And indeed, there's no shortage of world-class athletes who are severely bald. On the flip side, you can have a serious, even life-threatening heart problem and still have a full head of hair. What I'd like you to take away from today's video is that if you're dealing with hair loss, it might be a good idea to zoom out a bit. That's certainly a piece of the puzzle, but oftentimes there's far more to hair loss than just sensitivity to DHT. There's something that often can't be fixed just by popping a pill or applying a topical, unfortunately. And it starts with broader health and lifestyle. There's a ton of lifestyle tips that can help improve your overall hair health. Of course, stay away from processed foods, and get regular exercise. Additionally, one of the best things you can do to improve microvascular circulation to the hair follicles is remodeling the scalp with scalp massages. This is one of the things that helped me keep my hair healthy over the past five years, despite aggressive hair loss in my 20s. The easiest way to do scalp massages is with the Groband Pro. It's an automated scalp massager that's battery powered and completely controllable using the grow box. So you can choose how long to inflate, hold and deflate, and the headset is adjustable so it 
fits perfectly onto your head. It's been proven in a study to improve blood flow throughout the scalp. Check hairguard.com to learn more. Okay, so that's it for this video. Thanks for watching and make sure you leave a comment if you have a question or let me know which topic you want me to cover next and I'll see you in the next video.